Hello and welcome to Bitcoin Craft Britain, the show in which we have a quick look at the Bitcoin price and some of the markets may be affecting it. The price is at $7,825.5. Uh, it's had a high of $7,936.5 and a low of $7,692.8. Um, and it's up 1.78%. Uh, since our the last video, we sort of went sideways for, for a short period. And then we had um, quite a quite a steep drop down to the 7,500 resistance from the sort of 7,900 um, uh, uh, area, which seems to be an important price, just under 8k. Um, I wish we'd been bouncing. I mean, if you ignore these big shifts up and these big shifts down, we, we've just been bouncing around at that price range uh, for the past month there. Um, and I can I imagine we'll continue to kind of bounce around maybe for for for, for a little while longer, and then just slowly and steadily make our way up. I think we had the big whale move, which happened. Um, with those 25,000 bitcoins and then uh, uh, some other sort of whale manipulation for them to, to maybe scoop up some more bitcoins and then we had sort of a general well a little short uh, market panic that the price was gonna was gonna crash because it didn't react as people thought it was going to react and kind of bounce off the sort of 7,800 sorry the 8,700 and then up to 9,000 through 9,000 um, and that also this period also sort of coincided with some of the sort of silly number indicators out there. So that probably caused the price to go down a little bit. So it's understandable the price has gone down, but um, there's still plenty of upward momentum. Uh, and the very fact that it very quickly bounced off the 7,500 uh, low. So that, that kind of, to me, indicates that it's, it's going to creep back up. But I may be wrong, it may go to nothing. So let's have a look at the uh, news feed. Indian cryptocurrency regulation is ready-ish. That's pretty cool. India's getting... Um, getting regulated or getting their you know their official government bodies in order um not that us in bitcoin really care but it does make people's lives a little easier doesn't it sec sues messaging app kick over new securities offering russia's third largest retailer dixie launches an ethereum based trade finance platform uh, bitcoin's most prolific inspirations top three perform cryptocurrency vitalik calls bsv um a complete scam Good. Well done, Vitalik. Italy securities regulator issues suspension on crypto investments firm Associated Crypto. So these regulation um, government regulators uh, who are needed for big institutional investment to, to come into these assets and probably make them a bit more liquid and a little bit more stable for everyone else. Um, they uh, they're, they're trying to get their head around Bitcoin and around you know crypto quote unquote cryptocurrency, uh, and they they will be pulling in so called experts and occasionally they will hit up upon a good expert who isn't busy doing other good stuff, um, uh, and they'll give them some good advice and uh, and point them in the right direction. So the, the regulators are educating themselves, which is which is good. It's a good thing. Uh, let's have a look at Litecoin, shall we? So Litecoin's just a fuzzy representation uh, copycat of, of Bitcoin at the moment, price-wise, um, or it's in its movements anyway. So that's at $104.2. It's up 1.9%. It's had a high of um, $105.8 and a low of $101.1. It's, uh, yeah, it's just doing what Bitcoin's doing. Um, Ethereum, let's have a look at Ethereum. Ethereum's very similar, so $245.5. It's up 1.7%. It's had a high of 248.8 and a low of 240.73. Uh, so people will be getting itchy on B on Bitcoin and they'll be um, uh, they'll be you know experimenting with some of the coins or trying to diversify quote unquote um, uh, their Bitcoin portfolio by by buying up some altcoins. So that 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 may cause some of these altcoins to go up. When saying that, they've just uh, as as I say that they've just kind of dropped a little bit. Um, Apart from uh, Monero, so Monero seems to be doing pretty well. That's at eighty-five point eight dollars. Uh, it's up two point nine percent. It's had a high of eighty-seven point two dollars and a low of eighty-three point six dollars. Um, so yeah, I mean, out of those uh, top uh, four, three there, uh, Monero seems to be the the one with the maybe it's just less liquid. I guess I, I'm not sure, but it seems to have um, uh, more interesting price movements uh, than than Litecoin and Ethereum. Which really are just completely mimicking Bitcoin, uh, which Monero is as well. If you look at that, look at that, look at that chart. It's ridiculous. Uh, right. So gold. What's gold doing? Boom. Gold's popped right up, and it's at thirteen, uh, thir one thousand three hundred and forty dollars. Uh, it's up a percent almost. Uh, it's had a high of one thousand three hundred and forty-four dollars and a low of one thousand three hundred and twenty-eight point three dollars. So those gold books must be happy because they're well and truly clear from that descending. Uh, wedge which was uh, clearly forming 
I think this is off the back of um, well, you, I, I would say that it's the, to do with the trade tensions between the U.S. and China and the tariffs which the U.S. Trump wants to place on Mexico. But, um, uh, you know, th th that, that news didn't seem to affect gold in, in, in any significant way. And, uh, and now the, uh, the, the, the Fed rate, the U.S. Fed, have, have, have hinted towards the fact that, that they may um, do a, a rate cut. Uh, which is then good for banks loaning to each other. So um, that's the sort of news which should push the price up of, of stocks, uh, which it has if we take a look at the S&P 500. That's, you know, that's popped up. Um, but then gold's also popped up as well, so it doesn't really make much sense to me. Um, the two should usually be inverted. Uh, so it's, in it's interesting to see gold's behavior at the moment. Let's have a little look at the news feed, shall we? Stocks, US futures extend rally on rate cut hopes yeah so that's the rate cut so um uh, i think there was just a mention of it but that, that was enough to to get the markets excited because that would then counteract the 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 um the trade tensions between us and china and the tariffs placed on mexico um as far as the s p 500 is concerned i mean uh obviously that's going to be a positive for the markets um but then also uh here in the uk we had trump saying that uh in the post brexit uh, scenario when the UK Brexit, then because Trump, you know, is encouraging such a move, obviously doesn't seem to like the European Union very much. He said he'll give a very favourable trade deal to the UK, um, and that in that trade deal, everything will be on the table, even things like the NHS, which, as a UK citizen, is a very controversial thing to say because we set the NHS up immediately after the Second World War, and it's one of the the. Our, our finest moments as a country is getting together and providing health care for everybody. It's not perfect, it could be improved, but um, I think part of the reason people voted for Brexit in the first place is it was this promise that it was, it was going to benefit uh, the NHS um, uh, monetary-wise, which it was, was a, a lie, was a, a, fake, um, uh, a fake statistic by, by people who are pushing Brexit, like Boris Johnson and so on. But... Um, uh, yeah, so I think it's 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 a bit foolhardy of uh, Trump to to think he can come after the NHS, but um, as far as the markets are concerned, that opens up uh, the possibility of a whole new market. You know, the, um, for 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 yeah, US drug companies and big pharma to come into the UK um, uh, and and you know and start putting those prices up on medications. So um, so I can imagine that also having a positive impact on uh, the S and P on you know on on stocks and shares. Um, I'm still not sure why gold's gone up so much, but there we are. Um, uh, so if we zoom out um, to put gold in, into perspective and we go out on the yearly. Oh. Um, here we go, let's put it into perspective. So we've been hitting that 1,350 range for a long time. Um, and uh, gold's been, been, been eagerly waiting to kind of bust out of it. Uh, I would say that the, the shifts up and down, I suppose, on the, the yearly are getting smaller. Um, so it is quite likely that gold is, is, due, is due something of a breakout at some point in the next couple of years. Um, and they may try and go up to those, those heady heights of 2011. Um, but I think that that probably would be dependent upon uh, a recession and an imminent recession, which uh, some analysts are also predicting. Let's have a look to see in, in the news feed, in the S&P 500 news feed, if we can find anything about that. Uh, Stocks extends gains as dollar steadies, oil falls, market wrap. Um, the Dow is rising because the market heard the Fed's message. Yeah, but I also think that the NHS story from the UK has got a big part to play in that. Uh, this yield curve expert with a perfect track record sees recession risk growing. Um, I think I've got that article up, or I think I may have read it somewhere. No, I haven't got it up, but I, I, I think I read it. Um, so there's a researcher uh, from some university, and he developed a uh, an indicator um, on, uh, um, what's the word, uh, sort of, Neg not negative yields, but on uh, um, yields, yield, uh, fuck it, I'm just going to open it, because <laughs> uh, it is a quite a, quite an interesting um, article, so let's have a look, it's Yahoo Finance, so I know he did it for his PhD, um, and it's generally expect, it's expect, 
respected as an indicator as it's like predicted um, like eight recessions or something um, and then here you, here you are you can see us here now it's the the Harvey yield curve recession probabilities 12 months um, moves in the opposite direction to the price blah 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 the shorter term rates have held steady creating the dreaded prospect of an inverted yield curve that's why that's the one I was after so it's an inverted yield curve indicator and it would hint towards us going towards a recession which would uh, play into that um, that that narrative that the uh, gold price is, um, is 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 flattening and those shifts are getting smaller um, and then it's likely to to start making its way back up. So yeah, yeah, recession is a bad thing. So let's hope let's hope we're wrong. Um, let's have a look at the Bitcoin Reddit and see what's going on in Bitcoin land today. So we got the obviously the Lightning Hack Day uh, Munich video day two. If you haven't watched that, put it on in the background, watch it. Uh, choose wisely so you can buy the Apple Pro stand for $999 or the uh, um, 12,800,000 Satoshis. Uh, yeah, that's a much better buy. The Apple Pro stand's ridiculous at that price, but there we are. Uh, it's a nice bit of engineering and design, but not for $9,999. You can buy a HP Envy, which is fully Arch Linux compatible uh, for sort of $700, $800. Buy one of those instead, it's much better. Um, uh, there's an ad here for Stephen Fry's Heroes. It's a great book. Um, uh, if you ever get around to reading Mythos, which is his first book on Greek mythology, that is absolutely fantastic and a great read. It does a, a wonderful audio book too. So Stephen Fry's Heroes is good. Just a, a bit of a bit of a digression there. Non-Bitcoin related. Just saw this. Nice t-shirt. I'm buying it. Good. Um, yeah, we've got BitPay. Doing what BitPay do. Trying to lose themselves some Bitcoin clients. Uh, by claiming that Bitcoin has a network cost of uh, um, $2.19 and Bitcoin Cash is free to send. So, yeah, it's not very well worded BitPay. Uh, buy Bitcoin privately for alternatives to local Bitcoins. I have that article up, so I'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, how to buy Bitcoin with cash. Um, uh, I think someone said in there, which is worth, which is, which is, I think, is very true that if you want to buy Bitcoin with cash, uh, try and strike up relationships with people at your local Bitcoin events. Uh, try and do it, you know, um, uh, off, off, off the books. Try and, you know, have a, a, a connection with people you're buying and selling from. Uh, maybe that's not the best OPSEC, I suppose, but um, uh, usually within that circle of, of people you meet within Bitcoin meetups, you can you can figure out whether they're good or bad people. And there's always someone in a meetup, in a Bitcoin meetup, who's, who's, who's looking at some point to buy, sell some Bitcoin or buy some Bitcoin. So um, if you are interested in buying Bitcoin from people and you have got a little community of people you're in contact with, you just put the word out there, say you're interested in buying a bit of you know, um, peer, peer to peer Bitcoin. Uh, blah 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 blah. Lightning Network Pioneer releases new code for Bitcoin scaling concept. I've got that up too, so we'll have a look at that. And we've got an article on state chains here, and I've also got that up. So there's some nice articles in the um, uh, Bitcoin Reddit today. Uh, so state chains, non-custodial off-chain Bitcoin transfer. So I sort of read through this and tried to get my head around. Obviously, all this stuff is pretty confusing. Uh, Ruben Thompson did a, a, a video on this. Um, and there's also a white paper which you can read, which is probably advisable to read the white paper. Uh, from what I can gather, um, it's like a, uh, a, a, a decentralized federated um, entity. The state chain is a decentralized federated entity which uses multi-sig. And if using that um, decentralized federated entity you give yourself a little bit more deniability say if someone tries to seize your funds because you have a two of two multi-sig with the entity um, so uh, you, the funds cannot be seized by uh, you know government or by by somebody else they can force you um, to uh, hand over your bitcoin uh, but they could do that anyway if you just own your bitcoin private keys or whatever um, so it's kind of like it also makes uh, the ability to generate lots of lightning channels very easy um, and then also uh, hide those uh, lightning channels just as regular normal uh, state chain updates so yeah so you within the state chain you create an entity with like uh, a bunch of um, uh, other peers and then um, that entity then is in a two and two multi-sig with you 
and then you can send bitcoins to people um, uh, and then if someone tries to seize those bitcoins uh, there's no trusted third party they can seize it from so it's not completely decentralized and there is an element of i suppose you could call it trust but um it's incredibly hard like you know highly improbable that somebody could uh take control of one of these entities and if they do then i think you as the person engaging the user of the state chain um, you have an up-to-date record um, uh, off-chain transaction which you can then use to redeem your bitcoin so if the if the entity tries to steal your bitcoins and and, and creates a, a, a fake you know the fake movement of those bitcoins i think that's basically it if you want to know more read into it it's really fascinating state chains uh there's some great work being done on second layer stuff right now this is all you know post segwit um so yeah there's plenty of more to come and there's plenty more which hasn't been revealed so that's really something to look forward to what i really like about the state chains concept is this interoperability with uh with lightning and it is making it easier to to create sort of channel factories and, and make lots of lightning channels um uh, easily without having on-chain uh transactions which is cool so uh also um talking of lightning Tash Dreiser has come up with kind of like this is a um so when you have like your utxo uh bitcoin state when you download the blockchain um uh obviously it's quite big and it gets getting bigger uh, and this is a way of kind of zipping that i suppose is a good way of thinking it uh, it does require a, you downloading a little bit more data um, when you initially download it, but then once you've downloaded it, you can verify that state using this um, this algorithm thing, uh, which is kind of like a zip. So it means that you have to you don't have to have such big capacity uh, once you've downloaded that additional I think it's twenty five percent. So that's quite cool, like quite a cool efficiency saving, and it's still you know fully decentralized blah, blah blah and you're still a full validating node so um i'll see if any it'd be interesting to see if any uh wallets implement uh tadges uh so it's called um what's it called uh utreak so utreak so so like utxo but with a tree thing oh tree like a tree like a, a merkle tree maybe um that's pretty cool i imagine that's how he's um zipping it so zipping is probably not the right word but compressing compressing that data um Four alternatives to local bitcoins. So yeah, I mean, people want to buy bitcoins, and uh, people are getting more and more frustrated with local bitcoins because they're they're catering, you know, ninety that ninety percent of their clients, which are middle class people who don't care about KYC and they don't want to do like in person cash meets and stuff. And the people selling the bitcoins more and more, uh, they're you know they're they're traders on local bitcoins. Um, you know, they're fully registered companies. They pay tax. Um, and uh, their biggest clients are, you know, middle class people buying and selling Bitcoin. So, you know, why are they going to put themselves in, in harm's way? Um, so some people may need, you know, a more anonymous route and, the, the, you know, the market will, will, will create a facility for that. So you've got Hoddle Hoddle, um, which was, I think, one of the first non-custodians or the first non-custodian. Uh, and they have an, a KYC AML uh, free OTC desk. Um, they also organize the Riga Honey Badger Conference, so you know, props to Hoddle Hoddle, it's great. Uh, Pax Full, um, uh, which people use, I've never used it before, but it sounds pretty good. Um, local Coin Swap, uh, which is kind of like I think it's uh, like a grassroots local bitcoins trying to trying to make you know a version of local bitcoins which people, um, people we once used to and which once favored then obviously you've got the the wonderful bisque um so bisque is a you know fully decentralized app you download um and then that connects you with peers and you can you can you know buy and sell bitcoin uh in a decentralized way um and then you still have local bitcoin so although local bitcoins have uh brought in some of these measures to try and legitimize their operation they have created some loopholes like you can still use um a fake phone number and uh or you know it's like a burner phone number and a, a burner email uh, to access the local bitcoin market and then if you can find someone willing to sell your bitcoins who doesn't want kyc doesn't want a, a picture of your passport or whatever then that's easy enough to do and then i mean i would also say that local bitcoins is somewhere to strike up relationships with traders um, and if you build a good enough relationship with a trader uh, with a buyer or with a seller then maybe there's some um, room for maybe off book uh, transactions so 
yeah, so there we are. So plenty of this is, the market still has plenty of uh, different uh, routes for for getting uh, cash, um, uh, private uh, ways of buying Bitcoin. Um, Bit Bitcoin useful as an investor tip off says Goldberg who predicted ninety percent price crash. So this is about a gold bug who doesn't buy, isn't invested in Bitcoin, or he says he's not been invested in Bitcoin, which is probably wise. Uh, but uh, he does say that Bitcoin's very much got value as a price indicator for market sentimentality, which I think would, would make sense. So we've had this, you know, past couple of weeks, we've had this massive run up in Bitcoin. Um, and then some of the legacy markets, they're, they're slower to react to that, like like we've seen with gold. You know, there was, there was little to no reaction to the... Uh, um, the, the fear in the markets and, and some of the instability um, uh, whereas maybe the Bitcoiners are a little bit more paranoid and, and that they, they're more sensitive to that kind of news and they so yeah so he says that the um, uh, the Bitcoin can be a useful tip off and, and something to keep an eye on which is cool I mean you get these big big traders and big investors uh, looking at the Bitcoin charts um, it's only a matter of time until they think about buying just now just a couple um, uh, to give themselves some uh, some exposure to the Bitcoin market. So that's about it for uh, that is it for for Bitcoin Coffee Break. I'll speak to you tomorrow and have a good day.